everybody. It's great to see you. This is a continuation of um, What Did He Play? Where I play stuff off albums I've been so fortunate to do from my own solo albums to stuff that people are listening to these days like the Anderson Ponty Band, our Better Late Than Never album. Um, in this adventure today, we're going to do uh, show you how some of the parts that I played on uh, Infinite Mirage went and a little bit of kind of uh, how it happened, you know. All right, so first of all, the basic song that you heard me start with, this came actually from a, a hit song that we had with Jean-Luc back in the 80s uh, called Mirage, Mirage. And it was probably our most popular song worldwide. Everybody loved that song, as we did as well. And the way that kind of started was uh, in the studio, Jean-Luc wanted me to play a rhythm part. And it was basically when the, when the chords were going, I was playing, you know, some part, some kind of funky rhythm part. But uh, because of the way I am, I, of course, wanted to play along with the keyboard player. So I looked at his music at first and I... I copped the part and what turned out is we ended up with a combination part of both things uh, both live and in the recording and it's a, a basic basic chord changes were G minor to D minor in in the verse kind of a vamp thing so what's really cool is when this album was happening of course I wasn't there to uh, when they were rehearsing, I came in after, as most of you know, the history of Anderson Ponty Band and uh, re-recorded all the guitar parts. Um, the, the, the idea was that they needed a strong rhythm player, uh, but also to do kind of my thing, you know. And we came up with a part that you started to hear at the beginning I played with Wally on the keyboards. And then we went more to a rhythm part. But now, at this point, this was like the second song we were, we were recording for the album, and I was just now starting to get to know John Anderson um, and his genius. The, the, the thing is that, you know, none of us recorded in the studio together, so I was on Skype with John probably two, three times a day for about six months, more actually. And uh, we, whenever he had an idea, he... He called me on the phone and said, hey, can you get on Skype? But we get on Skype and we talked for five minutes or ten minutes about some stuff. Uh, and we had a very, very cool relationship uh, beginning. Um, he would say, hey, Jamie, what are your ideas on this? Uh, send me a little demo. And I would, but, you know, it was so time consuming. Uh, four bars or eight bars of music could take three days because we're bouncing ideas off each other. Well, John in... Uh, he showed me his greatness right up front. Uh, when, when he started to sing the verse here, he said, look, we need a, a kind of a guitar part, but I don't want you to play like a typical, you know, L.A. funk thing. I want it to be very melodic, you know? And uh, he sang me some stuff. And one was la 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 Just loose, you know, he'd just sing it loose. And I was inspired by that. And so during the verses, uh, I'm actually playing. Something on that order. Uh, certainly the beginning part, the funk part on the fourth bar is a little bit, um, a little bit different each time. And then I go to the chord changes, which is, um, well, I will show you when I, when I play the track, I'll talk over it, which would be expected um, and uh, when he sings the chorus you are the one you are the one I sing and then this sequence of chords which all comes basically from a D minor chord so or D minor 7 You are the one, you are the one, 
uh, D, D, right? And then, and there's uh, some very cool stuff going on in here. The thing was, I said, you want me to play all that while you're singing? Oh, says he just, he just, and this is kind of his famous line, John Anderson, at least for our band, he would say, just try it, just try it. And uh, after six months and eight months working with him, I try anything he asks for, you know. Um, very often, it's not exactly what I had pictured at the beginning, which is fantastic. It's one of the reasons why uh, I adore playing with this band so much. Of course, John Luke's original composition is masterful, and uh, playing behind him, uh, finding a, a, a rhythm part, you know. To, if you listen to the bass, uh, my guitar part kind of fits inside of the bass part but doesn't get in the way of Jean-Luc. So let me run this again, and this time I'm gonna speak about the parts I'm playing so you get an idea. That's G minor with the melodic arpe arpeggio he's playing, and I'm gonna play exactly what he's playing, G minor. D minor. Again. you may have noticed that that's actually in harmony. And so Jean-Luc's playing the t uh, the uh, one of the notes. I'm playing this pattern. Okay. Um, that's really cool. And then after, in order to transition into the verse, I play this. Which is just this. Okay, so you'll hear that now. Let's back this up, and I'll show you how that transitions into the verse. So you see how that transition happens, right? Now, one of the things I wanted to mention to you is this is probably the most challenging of all the pieces on the on the album because I've got to sing while I play this. So I've got to sing, you are the one, you are the one, infinity. And I remember when I was uh, practicing before the first tour, I was kind of nervous about that, but it worked out okay. All right, here's the verse with this. Okay, here we go. The beginning of every step you take, the message is they see. Many one come up to show you the way to set you free. Because you are the one. You are the one. choice here. On the record, um, the choice was to keep playing rhythm. One, two, three, four, one. But because I played with Jean-Luc for so, so long, um, I know what I can do with him to sometimes embellish what he's playing. So he's playing a little uh, line here.
See, I could have just done, which would have been fine, but he played da 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 da. So I decided I'll show you again to harmonize that. Let me go back one more second. Okay, so at the end there, Wally on the original recordings from Aspen that I played to uh, did this kind of funky piano part. It's almost like a guitaristic thing. And so when I heard him do that, I, I played it with him. In the moment that you first so all these little intricacies are what making this track so great. Okay, now this section changes night to night uh, for some of us. The idea here is this is bringing out that uh, more spiritual side of the piece and that we are all connected, we are all infinity. So musically, we all did what we felt would make it a little bit more, for lack of a better word, spacey. And uh, some of the things that I often do the first chord is G minor, so I might do something like this, which is a G minor with a nine added, just to get a little richness. Sometimes I do something like this, which is a what's called a cluster, where you build the notes in uh, two notes away or seconds. But you see with the bass going, that gives it that effect. But I do a mixture of uh, open and closed strings. That's an A, a G, an F, and an E. The D minor. Give that a listen and you'll see how this all works now. Just change the wheel on your We are infinity. 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 Okay, now comes the bridge. So now what happens in this is we go into um, Soul Eternal usually. Which we'll talk about in another session. So thank you very much. I hope that you um, are now seeing the music maybe in a different way and maybe finding it even more interesting than you might have thought it was. And uh, more fun because that's what music is about and hopefully inspiring. And uh, I just want, on a personal note, I want to thank you so much for uh, always supporting me and my career and the things I do. Uh, very much appreciated. So for now, thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.